Hello, everybody. I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study. And this week, we're going to talk about our largest ever blood pressure study, which has kicked off and you can all get involved with. Also got updates on COVID rates, which look like they're going to be slowing down, particularly in uh, age group of parents. And also look at the latest COVID symptoms, which seem to have been changed a little bit now that Omicron BA5 is really dominant in the UK. But first, we're going to talk about polio, because many of you have written to me or to Zoe with questions about this because of it appearing in the sewers. Now, um, I received a text message from the NHS reminding you to vaccinate your children. And all London children aged one to nine were going to be offered this polio vaccine. And because uh, you, many of you may not remember, but certainly when I was younger, this was real cause of paralysis uh, in some people and great uh, devastation before the vaccine really became fully available. And we now know that the virus has resurfaced uh, in the sewers in London, particularly the boroughs of Barnet, Brent, Camden, Enfield, Hackney, Haringey, Islington and Waltham Forest. Uh, and other areas of the country as well have lower concentrations. Now, this is all come about because of our COVID surveillance. We're picking up these things that uh, we weren't looking at perhaps quite as closely. But important to realise there's been no confirmed cases of polio, which uh, is really important. And the JCVI, um, this committee has said that the risk to the public is low. I think that's really important that we don't panic about this. Just realise that there is this virus out there, but uh, most people are immune. It's very hard for it to spread. Really important that uh, when the NHS does contact you, uh, do uh, sign up to get a booster or a catch-up polio dose uh, and get your vaccine if you're in an area where this is needed. So most people have been vaccinated, absolutely nothing to worry about. Real main problem uh, is in children. Now, the Zoe blood pressure study. Now, um, this is really exciting because many of you will have received invitations by email to take part in the world's largest home blood, home blood pressure study ever. And if you've not got it yet, don't worry, because it's going to be uh, coming within the next week. Now, almost 20,000 of you so far completed the survey, done your blood pressures and given uh, us the answers. And this uh, is incredible because this would have, uh, doing the twin study that I've been running for 30 years using old technology would have taken us 20 years to get that number of people's uh, blood pressure measured. And we can do this in a few days. There's still a lot more of you on the app that uh, we'd love to complete the survey. So um, do do it. You'll see how valuable it is for not only yourself, but also uh, for for science and health. And we can understand these your baseline levels really well. So that means we can um, look at future lifestyle interventions together, um, effects of diet, sleep, exercise, etc. And um, we want you to report your daily health and see how it fits in. So it's a really great snapshot of your heart health. And everyone really should know this and the new technology really is here. So you should all be able to see this. Uh, this is a very standard uh, blood pressure monitor driven by batteries. You just put the cuff around your arm. The arm's the only place it really works. Those ones on the wrists and fingers don't work very well at all. I don't encourage those, but these you know, can cost us as little as uh, 20, 25 pounds. And you know, it could be life-saving. So uh, do uh, try and get hold of one, uh, or you can use the old-fashioned ones where you have to listen to them, but that takes a bit more skill. Um, obviously, it's simply a question of put it, wrapping this around your arm and pressing the button. Um, now, we we're looking mainly at the systolic blood pressure. That's the higher reading on this. 
Uh, there's also a diastolic, which is the lower one. We know the higher one is the one that correlates best with the uh, indicators of health, risk of heart disease, et cetera. Um, from the uh, results we've got so far, we've got some uh, really very reassuring data. The average systolic blood pressure, that's the higher end of this, is uh, higher than the average of 120 millimoles slightly. But we know that blood pressure generally increases with age. So um, this is quite to be expected. And our contributors are slightly older than the average population. 94% um, of you are doing this yourself at home, just showing you how easy it is. And remember, you can borrow these from friends. A lot of people who have high blood pressure have one of these, and, and uh, many people in your family may as too. Some pharmacies also allow you to do your reading as well. So it's well worth uh, calling around if you really can't find a uh, monitor at home and uh, don't uh, want to buy one. Um, if we look at these results, um, you, you realize that most people are clustered around this 120. Um, generally, it goes up to about uh, 180. And we're seeing that if, if it is uh, 180, that's high, but it's, it's sort of believable and, and it may fluctuate day to day. Again, um, if it's much below 90, that's suggesting it's low or that the device is uh, not reading properly. So if you're outside those limits of 90 and 180, first recheck your device, get someone to look at it, retake it. And if it's consistently outside that range, then uh, probably suggest to make a, an appointment to see your practice nurse or your GP. But hopefully you only need to do that because we don't want to overburden the NHS. Um, we likely to repeat the survey in future. Um, so we get multiple readings over time. To, this has never really been done on this scale. But at the moment, we just really want to get a really good baseline uh, of our contributors' heart health. And we'll be giving more information on how this links up uh, as we go along. But it's really exciting. So do encourage other people to do this and other people in your family as well. Now, back to good old COVID. Um, We've been having a pretty good time recently as, as rates have dropped. But uh, some bad news is that rates are still high at 111,000 cases a day, only dropped 10% from two weeks ago. So it's really bottoming out here. And we're bottoming out at a rate of one in 39 people with the virus. And the R number has, has drifted back to one. So it looks at these rates from the, if you look at the age groups, are uh, pretty much all leveling off. And slight worry is that that group uh, 35 to 54, that looks like it's just ticking upwards. But I think in essence, it looks like we're stuck with uh, these fairly uh, moderately high rates for a while. And it's not going away as, as previous waves have done. This is because the Omicron BA5 is dominant. It's um, in 85% of all samples at the moment, up to the end of July. Uh, and it's super infectious. So still most cases are people who've never had it before who thought, oh, I'm super immune. I'm never going to get COVID. Uh, but BA5 is uh, smarter than uh, most people's immune systems. Now, let's just have a look at how the symptoms have changed uh, over the last uh, six weeks. We had a, a comparison really with the very beginning of July and, and what we're seeing in the last couple of weeks uh, now that BA5 is there. So if you remember, it was a bit of a mix before of all these different variants. Now it's pretty much BA5, uh, not completely, but it, it gives us an idea. Note that these data aren't adjusted for any differences in age or gender or circumstances of the population. So they're a bit crude, but we wanted to share them with you early. And I think we saw the largest, uh, if you can see this graph here, all, all these uh, symptoms here are those that are lower now than they were in July, so less frequent. And it's things like uh, 
altered smell um, is uh, the one that's really the, the lowest here, 15% uh, lower than it was just in six weeks. Um, and uh, we can see other ones, um, which is good news probably because we, we think that the BA5 might affect the brain less, cause less long-term consequences. So these ones are less common. Uh, we didn't find anything was what was more common, interestingly. Um, there might be some rare ones, but overall nothing. So all of these are slightly, um, it's altered smell, loss of smell, chest pain, tightness, shortness of breath, really important because that's the thing that can take to hospital. So 12% less than we saw before. Um, now, it's looking like it's causing fewer symptoms and maybe milder in most people. Of course, there are exceptions and some people are still getting very severe disease and the sheer numbers of them means that the numbers of people uh, dying is still uh, uh, important numbers going to hospital. Um, also, it's possible that BA5 causes symptoms with a lower amount of virus, and that could explain the slightly milder symptoms. It could explain why some people are fairly sure they've got COVID, but their lateral flow test is negative. So anyway, sore throat is still the uh, predominant symptom here, followed by headache. Now, uh, another topic that many of you have got interested in and written to us about is uh, Ebuchel, Ebuchel, which is this COVID drug uh, made by AstraZeneca, which is um, an antibody drug given for prevention, particularly useful for people with weakened immune systems who uh, are at high risk of getting uh, a viral infection in the next uh, few weeks. Now, uh, this has been authorized by the European uh, agency, the FDA, and, uh, and I've had the government's own uh, medicine safety um, committees, but this month the government decided it wasn't going to supply it because they felt there wasn't uh, sufficient data on the duration of protection of it. Now, it's available in 32 countries at the moment, and AstraZeneca, who made it, said there's, there's plenty of real-world data that it works, and the studies they cited, um, which were their Provent studies, uh, claim 83% protection at six months. Now, I don't know, I haven't looked in this, de this data in great detail um, to know who's right or wrong, and do understand how hard it can be for those who are have immune problems, immunocompromised, to get this news. Hopefully the government will look to the other countries where majority of countries have actually accepted it, see what's going on there, get some more advice, get outside our own bubble, um, uh, or uh, suggest another alternative, because it could give people a lot of uh, reassurance to, to come out of the house if they're still worried about COVID. So in conclusion, uh, COVID rates are bottoming out. The uh, drops we saw in the last uh, few weeks have come to an end. And I think we're going to stay at, the, stay at this level until schools start coming back in a week or two. And I think we're going to slowly see this start coming up again. Uh, we're all expecting this um, big uh, surge in uh, September, October. Do remember to wear a mask if you're in poorly ventilated areas and beware of meeting up with people who say they've got these uh, COVID symptoms. Now, a bit of good news is the symptoms of the virus may be getting more mild with BA5, may be less numerous. Um, and if you are unfortunate enough to get infected, hopefully it's not going to be as bad as it was, say, uh, three or four months ago. Polio has been detected in London sewers. I don't think it's anything for us to be concerned about other than to make sure that you get your children vaccinated when you get that invite. Do remember to join our amazing blood pressure study. I think it's going to be incredibly insightful for everybody, uh, personally and for the community. Do fill in the survey if you have access to a blood pressure monitor and share it around uh, if you've got one. Uh, 
Uh, keep an eye on all your symptoms. Do keep logging in the health app every day. Finally, do remember to subscribe and like our channel, share the app with friends and family, and support science and keep logging. Thanks a lot.